Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and I might have to shout because I'm so far away from the camera. You're probably wondering why there's this weird angle. Well, today we're going to be building a chair from Noble Chairs. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so again, apologies for the weird camera angle. This is the box. Uh, this is the Noble Chairs Hero, the white edition. This is coming in the kind of fake leather, which is uh, actually a really nice fake leather. It's kind of like the stuff you'd get in cars, that kind of stuff. So it's got that really nice protective layer on it, but it still feels nice and soft and supple, but it's also easy to keep clean. Anyone who's had a white leather anything will know how impossible it is to keep clean. So with that nice protective coating on top of this, this should stop things like uh, denim marks coming through and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, all kinds of gaming related marks. This is a huge box. Now, for those of you that are wondering if you're buying one of these Noble chairs, the actual weight of the box, everything as it comes included, is uh, the gross weight is 33 kilos. That is uh, just under 73 pounds. So this is actually heavy. So I would suggest if you can, make sure you've got a nice sturdy work surface, unlike these cheap ass IKEA tables. Um, yeah but we have to work with what we have. So I'm gonna try and get this up on the table and we're gonna go through, do the unboxing, show you all the individual parts. Then we're gonna do the assembly. Um, then I'm gonna use the chair for a little bit. Then we'll come back with my thoughts and findings and my recommendations. Obviously, it's not a cheap chair. So it is somewhat of an investment. This is something which I would suggest is, it's a gaming chair. It's not an ergonomic chair, although it does kind of have ergonomic features such as the bolsters, the backrests, etc., etc. But this is designed for gamers, really. It's not designed for office workers. If you're gonna be setting this kind of eight to 10 hours a day, it's probably not gonna be for you. But if you're a gamer and maybe you wanna slouch in your chair and you've, you're sitting in all kinds of different positions, maybe your feet up on the desk, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, this is a comfy chair, but it's not an ergonomic chair specifically. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's uh, get this on the table and we'll start going through the packaging. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we actually get inside here. So I've cut the edges off to make things a little bit easier. So obviously, oh my God, that is heavy. Actually, I can't even take that out, that's too heavy. All right, let's start with this. So one of the nice things to start off with, first of all, is the actually kind of like crushed velvet or velour style headrest with obviously the Noble Chairs logo on there. And we've got the straps on there. So actually that's the, yeah, the backrest that slides up and down the back. That actually feels really nice, even actually in the plastic cover. I don't want to touch this because I think my hands might be dirty. But this is about the only thing which is going to get the odd uh, mark on it. But luckily, there is a zipper on here. So you can unzip it and take the foam off and put this section actually in the uh, in the washer or the, the tumble dryer, washing machine, whatever. It's really nice actually. It feels really, really soft. Incredibly soft. Listen, there's marks on there, but I think it's just the fabric's rucking up slightly. Yeah, pretty good. Like that so far. So this is the uh, the backrest of the chair. It's got the Noble logo on there. Actually embossed in today as well. That looks pretty cool. Nice stitching, nice framework. Very heavy, very heavy. But yeah, it's got the uh, protective coating on there so it's not gonna get dirty. Excellent stuff, so let's get rid of that. Next up is the uh, the headrest cushion. Again, we've got the uh, elastic on the back and this is finished in that same kind of fabric really plush feeling that feels really soft and you can unclip that and put that around the back of the chair again got the zipper on the bottom there so you can unzip all this and stick it in through the washer okay so next up is the uh, the actual base this thing is massive the actual spread of it is huge I'll try and give you some measurements on the screen a little bit later so you can see how big it is but this is all all cast it's all solid metal as you can see there, yeah, that's uh, been made exceptionally well. Nice finish to it as well, but yeah, very solid. Also in the box, there is a Noble Chairs Hero installation guide, which is uh, very kind of Ikea-esque. Actually, there's not a great deal going on there. So yeah, it should be uh, pretty straightforward. Actually, some of it's stuck together. 
So yeah, it's a looks like it's a two person. One of you's got to read the instructions, the other one's got to help. So yeah, it gives you a breakdown of all the components, how it all goes together, which bits to do first, it, all that kind of stuff. Pretty comprehensive, but we'll find out as we go through it. So yep, instruction manual, keep that to one side for now. So one of the next parts we've got is actually the uh, the seat base itself, as you can hopefully see there. And they've actually attached one of the arms on it already. So one of the arms is done. Actually, look at the screws. The quality of those screws is absolutely phenomenal. You zoom in on those and you can see those a little bit better. So yeah, the uh, the quality of those screws is phenomenal. They're actually really nice and you've got spring washers and all that kind of stuff. There's things like this, the little quality bits, which make a difference on a chair of any sort. But yeah, really nice to see that. Really proper, decent, heavy-duty uh, bolts and nuts and basically all the kind of uh, the metal work on there. Excellent. So this is uh, the other arm, which hasn't been attached. And as you can see, got that loads of nice, strong metal. These are 4D arms, so four directions of movement. And you've got a bit there to uh, increase the height on the leg, etc. Okay. Up, down, and there's another switch there. So that's going to move it forwards and backwards. I'm pretty sure there's a twist as well, but I'll have to work out how to do that. So yeah, there's the, uh, the padded armrest. Plastic on the top of here, this isn't um, a fabric, but it's actually really solid as well. Next up is the uh, the Noble Chairs Accessories Box, designed in Germany. Little look, see, see what we get in here. So this is going to be all your accessory parts. So you've got the uh, handles to go on the gas lift. You've got the wheels to go on the base. The cover to go over the gas or the strut. There is a set of screws, Allen key, plastic cover to go over the uh, the sides of the brackets, and another one for the other side. Got the gas lift piston, and also another kind of hockey stick handle for the uh, adjustment on the chair for the tilt, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the next bit is the uh, the actual kind of the mechanism for the chair itself. So we've got our tension adjuster here. So this is going to adjust the tension for the tilt. You've also got the rods for the adjustment of the tilt and gas lift position, one on each side. And that's the hole where the gas piston strut goes into, and the bolt hole areas to attach it to the actual chair itself. So yeah, pretty good, and that's actually really heavy, just on its own. This, Just this bit is really heavy. So I'm going to put it down, because it is a bit too heavy. Okay, so the first part of the installation is the uh, put on the other arm. So what we want to do is loosen off these three bolts here, which uh, you can do with the included tool. So loosen those off entirely, and we can take those off. There's a little bit of a closer shot of the uh, screws coming out there, and the screws themselves. We can uh, get you a bit of a closer picture there. So you can see there's the bolts, which have Allen heads, and then you've got a flat washer. And then next to that, there is also on there what appears to be a spring washer as well. So that's going to take up some of the slack. So that's the three screws to remove. So now we can line up the arm with the chair and put the screws back in. Top tip for you here, if you're actually doing this, if you're doing it um, kind of single-handed or whatever, or maybe you're filming the process, which I suggest you really, really don't. But what you can do is if you use the accessories box, you can actually use it to support the base of the chair. So just put it towards the end of the, uh, the cover here and just into the armrest. And you'll find that if you actually put the arm next to the chair, it's uh, pretty much exactly the right height. Of course, you can adjust the arm a little bit to make it fit your particular needs. So that way the, uh, the arm is kind of self-supported, which is gonna make it easier to get the screws in because the last thing you want to do with these screws is to uh, end up getting them cross-threaded because obviously the threads are only machined and if you cross-thread them then that is your uh, relatively expensive chair needing a, a tap and die set or something along those lines. So I would suggest doing the threads back up or the, the bolts rather and I would do them by hand just to make sure that it's uh, all threading nicely. You'll get to a point where you won't be able to thread it anymore anyway. So at this point then, you're gonna have to kind of adjust your arms now. At this point, you can adjust the arms however you want to, whether you have them kind of in or out. 
I've got the ones on the other side in the in position. So I'm gonna set it to the in position here as well, as you can see, I'll just give you a close up of that. So as you can see, we are currently on the kind of in position. Now, of course, if you want to, you can use tools for this, get out the power tools, but this is included in the kit. So seems like a good way of doing it and just support the chair or the base rather with your hands just so it doesn't rock. Although the box is holding it in a position quite well, it's always worth giving it a little bit of extra support. So yeah, tighten up the bolts, that's as far as you need to go. Just make sure that the actual washers are compressed and that is the arm done. So the next part is the uh, the actual kind of the base control center with the paddles on. So what you want to do, this is the back of the chair, this section here, where you've got the noble chairs tagged there and that is the front of the chair. So your adjustment is gonna be facing towards the front of the chair. Just make sure you get it around that right way. So the gas strut is gonna to be towards the back here, which makes sense because if it was at the front, it would be very, very uh, uneven. So in order to attach this, there's four Allen bolts and they actually supply five in the, uh, in the pack in there, which uh, you can just see there. These have got the spring washers and also the uh, the flat washers already pre-installed so again just use your hands just put it in gently these are actually threading very very nicely so just get them to a point where they're hand tight again we don't want to be uh, destroying the threads on them if there's any resistance just uh, give it a little move and then try and get it in again the last thing you want to do on these is to uh, strip the threads that would be very, very bad. Not totally overcomable, if that's even a word. You could get like a, I think it's a helicoil kit they call them, so you can kind of re-thread it, but yeah. It's not ideal. So do all four up hand tight. And if you want to then, you can make any sort of last minute adjustments, although it does seem to fit pretty well as it is. Next thing up, you wanna get your wrench, Allen wrench, or your power tool, and then you can just do up the, uh, the final section probably a good idea to do it a section at a time much like you would with a, uh, a CPU cooler this is one of those uh, actually quite high pressure videos that we make here because if anything goes wrong on this there isn't really a second chance so we have to make sure we do things properly and methodically don't damage anything so that's all the screws bolted up nicely you can obviously if you want to keep this somewhere safe if they start slacking off or loosening off as time goes on you can always give them a little bit of a tighten up but that is that section done. Next part is the uh, the base station. So we've got our base station. Now I've put this, some of the actual packing that actually came included with the box. I put that just to protect the table because obviously, like I said, this is metal. So we don't want to damage the surface at all. And also prepare your wheels. These wheels are actually really, really nice. Proper decent bearings in there, which is uh, unusual to see. And also little things like those uh, washers and grommets and what have you. Yeah, everything about this chair screams quality. I've had quite a few gaming chairs in the past, and this is the first one we've had from Noble. And yeah, this is, uh, well, yeah, the quality is off the hook, it really is. So we've got five wheels, five locations. So you can just tap those in, and they go in quite nicely. Trying to drop them. Your wheels in position and yeah, they do come out you can actually replace these if you want for other wheels that noble do actually sell other ones so they hold in place they're not going to fall out or anything so if you turn it upside down they don't want to fall out but they're uh, relatively easy to actually remove should you need to so take it out and obviously replace them should you see fit so yeah that's uh, that section done so the next part of this is to actually attach the gas lift so this is the, the gas lift. This section here, this is where we actually pressurize or put pressure on to make it extend or go down. And this bit actually goes into the base. So very simple to do. All you need to do is just drop that in there and that will plop into place. And the second part of this section is, this is your kind of uh, piston cover. And that just compresses, so all we wanna do Put it down like that and then just a little bit of pressure on there so then when this gas lift goes up the cover will come up with it as well just to uh, protect
protect it and hide it and make it look a little bit nicer. So we've got the, the back ready, so what I'm going to do is undo these uh, bolts. We're getting bolts with washers and also spring washers. And you should find there's two on each side. And then we're going to flip around to the other side. So this is the side with the uh, lumber support. This chair actually does have a built-in lumber support, which is actually really nice, saving you having to faff around with one of those cushions. They do include a backrest cushion as well, so if you want to use that, you can do. But this is very much like a lot of BMWs and things like that, where you've actually got the, uh, the tensioner on the side so you can adjust the lumber support in the back here manually. I quite like that. So that's the other two bolts out. So now what we want to do is to actually line up the chair physically with these parts here. So as you can imagine, one of the bolts is going to go through this one, one of the bolts is going to go through this one. Now, how you do this uh, is entirely up to you. I would say realistically, you're probably going to want two people to actually, one to hold the chair in place, one to actually hold the back piece, and maybe even a third person or one of the other people to actually put the bolts through and start them and make sure there's no pressure or tension on it. Again, we don't want to thread those threads or cross those threads even. So with this screw, when you're putting them in, if you find any resistance on the screw, just uh, try and move this around or this bracket, just move it around a little bit. You don't want to thread the threads or cross the threads. Now, I've actually done the other side already to uh, make life easier for filming purposes. So again, this thread has gone in really easily, virtually no force required until we get to about here. So I'm gonna give that a little bit of a wiggle there. And if, if the threads get stuck at any point, just give the, uh, the chair and the bracket just a little bit of a wiggle and then you should find that the threads loosen up a little bit so we're pretty much all the way in there so the next thing to do is to grab our trusty little tool this one not the other one don't forget there is a spring washer on here so once it gets to a point you will actually see the spring washer actually uh, kind of collapse on itself so make sure you go ahead and do that I still haven't moved the arm on the other side, the actual release arm. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. So these have been mostly tightened up most of the way. Now you probably notice as well, I've taken off most of the sticker on the side here, the warning sticker for this handle. Choose to take it off if you want to or not. It's going to be covered up actually at the end. So again, it's entirely down to the individual. One thing I'm noticing already just doing this build is how solid the whole construction is. There's kind of no wobble to it or anything and all the metals are really nicely welded. And again, you've got the zipper access to all this so you could actually possibly take this off at some point. But yeah, very nice. Again, we've got this adjustment here for the uh, lumber support. So that is the, uh, the backrest done. So now we can go ahead and put the covers on. So in the packaging, got these two covers and they do appear from what I can tell, to be identical. I know they are marked inside, so there is an R on that one and an L on that one. I guess it depends really which one is left and right. How are you measuring it from being sat in the chair or looking at the chair? Okay, we're gonna go with the opinion that this side facing us at the moment is the right-hand side because when you're uh, sat in the chair, this will be the right-hand side. Now, when you're measuring it up or lining it up, there's a tiny little hole there, which you can probably just like see and that matches up with this hole here. So this is where there is a screw. There are two screws, which are these ones here. They do include a third one, just in case you uh, lose it or something. As they do with the bolts, there's a spare, as we said earlier. So get the one that says R, that one there. I'm gonna stick it through there, and you can if you want to, just have a, a quick visual on the inside, and you should be able to see the, uh, the hole in that metal work. Pop that through there. This is where the screwdriver bit comes in handy. So you can, if you want to, you could probably just line that up so it sticks through. If you hold the screwdriver in place, then you can kind of line it up with that screw hole, which should make life a little bit easier for you. There we go. That seems to grasp on there. That's excellent. So you'll notice there is a little bit of a gap here between this plastic and this plastic. And that is essentially so that there, if anything gets stuck in there, it doesn't kind of abrace that section plastics being in too close a tolerance to each other, otherwise they have a tendency to create friction and noises and all that kind of stuff we don't really want. Last thing you want from your gaming chair is it to be creaking away, but so that's that fully tightened up. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So again, same deal for the other side. So this is now L for left, stick the screw 
into the hole there, get our cross-headed screwdriver attachment, and again, you can probably gauge it by eye. These are always things which are a little bit of a pain in the backside, not, not exactly a perfect solution. Slight area there where there's a gap isn't a problem. And don't over tighten the plastics, as long as it's hand tight, that's going to be fine. If you over tighten it, potentially you could damage the plastic, so don't go too crazy on it. Just make sure it doesn't wobble. But that effectively is that part done. So something which we need to do also as well, these uh, hockey sticks. You need to attach these to the front here, so you've got the bar which is coming out. You'll notice there's like notches, and they line up with notches as you're actually inside as well, so it can only physically fit in in one way. With one of the sticks on the side, it's got to be facing outward, downward, sorry. And the other one on the other side, if we just spin that round, you can see is flat. So flat on one side and like this on the other side. You'll notice it because there's notches. Actually, I'm not gonna pull it off to show you, but there's notches on the bar anyway. You get the general idea. So that is how to put those on. Okay, so that is the uh, the little project finished. So the chair is fully assembled and I've got to be honest with you, it's pretty darn comfortable. It's considerably more comfortable than the chairs I've been using previously, but then any of you that are watching the channel, you'll know that I do sit on some weird chairs because of the lack of room we have in this little studio setup that we've got. And I just wish there was more room to actually enjoy a chair like this. Whether or not I'll be able to use it full time, I'm not entirely sure. Again, it is pretty tight here, it's uh, pretty cozy, but the chair itself is really, really nice. Loads of adjustments, so you've got adjustment pretty much everywhere. One thing I really do like is the lumbar support. They do bizarrely include this uh, lumbar cushion, so you can use that if you want to. There are hooks and straps, but this I think is more for the version of the chair which actually has the holes in the top, so you can thread that through, so you can adjust it on that elastic strap. Whereas with this as it is, you can just literally just put it behind you to support your back. And it's actually really, really strong. It's uh, like a memory foam, but it's very, very stiff, so it's going to really uh, kind of prop you up if you do need that. Personally, for me, I don't think I'd bother with it. It's actually really comfortable and it feels actually quite supportive. I can feel my back actually being supported, even with the lumbar support on the adjuster on the side. This is basically turned right off at the moment and it actually still does feel very supportive. The actual base of the chair itself, supporting my upper legs very, very nicely. It just feels a really comfortable, relaxed chair. I actually just sat here doing this yeah, it does feel extremely comfortable. I'm not perched on my little stool, which I normally am. And compared with some of the other gaming chairs we've had, now not to disrespect any of the other gaming chairs that we've had before because they've all suited their purposes at the certain prices that they are available at. But yeah, this is the kind of the Rolls Royce of chairs. It really is. And Noble chairs have always been seen that way. They are the kind of like premium chair brand. You obviously do pay for that quality. So even little things like the bearings, which are used in the actual pistons and things like that, so when you actually want to swivel your chair from left to right, it just feels really snug, there's no wobble in the chair at all, and just spinning yourself around in the chair, it just seems like you want to spin forever, the bearings are so well made and so well supported, it's like there's zero friction, it's like sitting on air, it really is. It isn't an ergonomic chair, so before anyone points out in the comment section below, I know, it isn't an ergonomic chair, you can spend considerably more money on a proper ergonomic chair, and again, it comes down to what you want to use it for. Now, an ergo chair is designed for you kind of sat at a desk typing away doing essentially office work. Whereas this kind of chair is a gaming chair. So if you want to be sat up in front of your monitor, got your game pad and you're resting on your armrest, all that kind of stuff, then it's going to be great. If you want to kick back a little bit, recline the chair, sit back, enjoy a movie, that kind of thing, put your feet up on the desk, it's that kind of chair. Whereas an ergo chair is not designed for that in any way, shape or form. It's designed to keep you in a specific posture, whereas this is a whole lot more relaxed and it looks the part as well. So part of that whole gamery ethos is having things which look the part, and this definitely does. It just looks fantastic. Little details which they've really paid attention to, things like the stitching. The stitching is absolutely perfect, and I'll give you some close-ups of the stitching going through everywhere. I've looked all over. I cannot see a single deformity in any of the stitching, which for a gaming chair is relatively unusual, especially 
the slightly cheaper ones. So obviously this chair does have all the kind of usual features that you'd expect. So you've got the adjustable armrests, which are adjustable in lots of different ways. You can move them forward, backwards, swivel them around, and also obviously height adjustment as well. All of that is available on the chair itself. And when it comes to reclining, you can lock it in recline mode. Also, you can recline the actual seat back as well. So not only can you recline the entire chair in a locked position, you can also adjust the side as well. There is a lever and actually, even the handle on the lever just feels extremely premium. When you lock it into any of the individual kind of recline settings, just moving it back a notch, lock it into position, and it just feels really sturdy and very premium. I've got to be honest with you, I'm super impressed. The color itself in white is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but if you are one of those people that you've got your white PC, you've got your white peripherals, come on, you really do need a Noble Chairs white in your collection. So overall, very, very impressed. Prices and affiliated links will be in the video description. It isn't a cheap chair. It really isn't. So if you're of a more budget minded, then potentially you want to look elsewhere. We'll put some links as well up here so you can check those out, some of the more budget chairs we've reviewed in the past. And obviously some ergo type chairs as well. But if the gamer in you actually really does want a white chair, you want quality, you want precision engineering as this chair definitely is, and actually very easy to assemble as you've seen from the video, although we stretched out and give you kind of hints and tips. It's really straightforward. You don't really need a great deal of kind of engineering background or anything. As long as you can follow simple instructions, then it's very simple to do. And hopefully you've enjoyed the assembly. We had a lot of fun putting it together. And actually I'm now glad that I've got a really nice comfortable chair to relax in after it's all done. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. If there's anything you feel that I've missed or you'd like elaborated on, then please do let us know and I will try and answer your questions as quickly as possible. We'll probably try and do a follow-up video on this in a couple of weeks or a couple of months time just to see how it's faring. I know that there's going to be some of you out there that have got this chair in mind and you're thinking the white colour, is it going to stain, is it going to mark, all that kind of stuff. Clearly I'm wearing denim jeans, a lot of people do, especially those younger folk out there with zips and buckles and all that kind of stuff. So be interesting to see how well it fares but we will certainly try and do an update in a few months time. So if you enjoyed this sort of content, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of future video releases. But for now, thanks very much to Noble Chairs for sending this out to us for review purposes. And thank you all for watching. So to wrap things up, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.